This week we're going topless in the Sahara Unlimited Wrangler from Jeep and not only are we going to be doing some open air driving with the family, we're going to check out the all new eco diesel engine under the hood. Coming up right after this. The Sahara slots in just below the top of the line, most rugged Rubicon, but just because it's not the Rubicon doesn't mean that it's not made for off-road. All Wranglers are extremely capable and are trail rated for off-road use. So there it is. This is the Unlimited and the Sahara only comes in a four-door or the Unlimited and you have that signature seven slot front grille. Now standard are halogen headlights, but if you get the LED light package, it's a thousand dollars. You get LED lights all around. It gives this new JL Wrangler a more modern uh, touch in the headlights, especially in the integrated lights in the large fenders. Then you have the inset lights in this rugged bumper. Tow hooks here. Standard are 18 inch wheels on the Sahara with 255 70 series tires. If you go for the Rubicon, you get bigger tires than that. And I like how Jeep has remained true to its roots in a lot of ways. Uh, this really still is a Jeep. Like you have the manual releases on the hood here. There is no release inside. You have the large fender flares the big rocker panels to get in and out of. Uh, this is a four door. Now the opening is a little bit narrow on the bottom side for getting in. Uh, the kids have no problem getting in, but uh, some people might have a little problem getting in because of the width of it. But um, once you're inside, lots of room there. And then in the back, you have your LED tail lamps, like we mentioned, a full size spare tire, third brake light mounted there and in the middle of the spare tire this is where your backup camera is right there and this has a swing out rear door and a flip up rear glass. The rear glass can come off this does have a wiper on it and yeah what can I say it's a Jeep. I remember last year when we tested the Gladiator, I was a fan of the new interior of the JL Wrangler, and this is no different. So uh, there, this one has a few different options on it. First of all, the seats that we're sitting in here, they are leather lined seats. They have the Sahara uh, written across the back and the logo there. They are heated as well, and that's part of the cold weather package, which is an option. So you get heated seats and a heated steering wheel. And one thing I like about uh, this system, first of all, um, this system is a Uconnect system in the middle. Standard is a seven inch screen. Or if you get the navigation uh, package, you get an 8.4 inch screen. And this Uconnect system, I've said it before, it's one of the easiest ones to use. But what I like about it is that all the controls are redundant. So you don't have to just use the touch screen. So there is a climate control, or let's just say your heated seats. There's a control button there. I can turn it on by touching yet yeah, just right below it, there are two buttons. Easy to turn on the heat, uh, easy to control the temperature, and everything is at arm's reach. Let's say if I'm driving here, this is where my elbow is, I just have to basically just go right down and I can control that volume just like that. The heat, same thing, love it. The steering wheel has a, a nice uh, weight and nice uh, thickness to it, it also does tilt and telescope as well. And in the middle, you have an information display flanked by two analog gauges. Below here, you have your uh, power window controls, which are in the middle because remember, on these Wranglers, these doors do come off. So it comes with a Torx bit set and you can unscrew it and take the doors off and the wiring comes off as well. And you're gonna probably store those in your garage. Uh, certain places, depending on where you live, that might be legal or it might not. So you have to check on your regulations of where you live. But one thing I did notice though, is since these doors come off, the wiring, there's a wiring kind of a, a snake that's in a canvas little pouch, I guess, or I call it a snake. Anyways, um, it kind of, it folds and it bends and I don't like that it's, it's always rubbing on my leg. And uh, that's kind of a little bit annoying. As well, there doesn't seem to be a, a dead pedal for your foot on these Wranglers. So 
I like to have my left foot kind of elevated on a flat uh, surface. There is none of that there. Maybe it's just me though. All right, one of the most exciting things with this Sahara is that it's available with a Sky One power roof. Yeah, so one touch, either way, open or close, and this roof slides all the way back by power, and it can be done while you're driving up to 60 miles per hour, or around 96 kilometers an hour. And if you don't go for this Sky One roof, it does come standard with a three-piece hard top. Now, what's this top worth? It's not cheap. It'll run you just under $4,000 for this option, but it's never been easier to go topless on a Jeep. Connectivity wise, you have two USB ports, a USB type A and a USB C. Up front, you have uh, more USBs in the rear. You have 12 volt outlets in the front. Also one in the back cargo area. And this does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. There is a backup camera. Now for 2021, they're gonna be introducing a front camera available as well on the Wrangler. And that's gonna be really handy for those that uh, really do a lot of off-roading. Now, if you opt for the navigation 4C package that we mentioned that gives you the larger screen, you also get the Alpine stereo. And I'm telling you, this thing rocks big time. You have a big subwoofer in the rear cargo area. And one thing that makes a big difference is the speakers that are mounted in the top roll bar right above you. It makes a huge, huge difference. And this would be a lot of fun in the summertime. are on the road and luckily it is not raining right now so I say we take the top down or slide it back what do you think gets ready one touch Yay. there and we can be moving as I mentioned up to 60 miles an hour so as you can hear or probably not hear is what's underneath this hood and this is the new eco diesel v6 now we had a chance to test the eco diesel in the ram 1500 big fan of it got amazing fuel economy with it like basically around seven or eight liters per 100k and um, this is essentially the same engine it's not exactly the same in tuning wise but yeah so this one puts out 260 horsepower and 442 pound feet of torque and that's matched to an eight speed automatic torque flight transmission now here's one thing though you can only get the eco diesel in the unlimited so you have to take the four door and you have to get it with the automatic transmission if you want to get the manual transmission you cannot get the eco diesel girls just a just a little, little quieter okay just little little whispers please okay, whisper okay girls it's recording right now it's recording you okay we are stopped at a light now and one thing that I have noticed with this Eco Diesel, there we go, let's put it to the floor. Okay. Okay, there's a lot of pickup, but what I really do notice though is that if I am, let's say I'm in a higher gear right now, we're in uh, fourth gear and we're cruising along at 30 kilometers an hour and I put my foot to it, there definitely is a noticeable delay. And it's caught me, uh, by, it's caught me off guard a couple times when I'm trying to kind of duck into traffic or something like that, and I'm expecting that power to come on right away, and it's like, uh oh, it's not quite there. And I think that has to do with the transmission. It's just a little bit on the sluggish, sluggish side, uh, but uh, as long as your RPMs are up, you kind of don't get that. I really like this open air driving, even though it's uh, not sunny right now. Imagine what it'd be like in the summertime though. Get the music going, uh, you know, it starts to rain, just hit that button. The kids love uh, having that top down, that's for sure, or top slid back. Well, Cynthia actually had a chance to drive this quite a bit. Cynthia, what do you think of this? Because I know a lot of women or females like Jeeps too, and Brooklyn loves Jeeps. That's her favorite vehicle is a Jeep, but what do you think about driving it? It definitely drives like a truck, a bit rough, you know, for me as everyday drive, but uh, it's going to be a fun car to drive a nice day out. 
it is a bit bumpy, but they have done some big improvements on making this a lot more livable and how the steering feels on uh, on regular paved roads. Uh, it's it's quite civilized. I, I I could see driving this every day, absolutely. And you know, with that clearance as well and the bigger tires, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, you know a few obstacles. If you have to, if you're parking, you can actually kind of go over the curb and, and things like this. That would feel it's more solid. When you're uh, we're, in there. Going, yeah. we're going up a hill right now. The torque is it's it's tons of torque. It's all there. Expected in a diesel. If you want to tow anything, it's 3,500 pounds towing uh, capability. Now comes the question. Um, Who's going to buy this diesel? Because here's the thing. It's not an inexpensive option. This diesel option is $7,395. That's $7,400 for the diesel option. And I mentioned you have to get the automatic transmission, which is going to cost you another $1,795. So we're talking over nine thousand dollars to get this this diesel option and yeah if you're a fan of diesel yeah go for it if you're going to buy this for uh, saving fuel i wouldn't bother going that way because it's going to take you hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kilometers before you could actually kind of get back those savings and and make yeah make it uh, a feasible option um but uh yeah there are people there that just really like the diesel. It's great for off-road. We didn't get a chance to take this off-road, but the, the torque is just so linear. It's so easy to drive. Um, and you know, I would say this would be a great vehicle for uh, going off-road. Of course, all Jeeps come with four-wheel drive. This has the command track part-time four-wheel drive. So on the fly, you can not switch it from uh, two-wheel drive to four high, and then of course four low, if you're gonna be doing uh, some more aggressive or crawling or four by fouring uh, but there is an option to go to a select track system which is a, an automatic full-time uh, four-wheel drive system so it can select for you and that's a $795 option another option that you can get and this is equipped with is the advanced safety group and that's going to give you your forward collision warning it's going to give you your adaptive cruise control with stop and go and your advanced brake assist system so there are a lot of choices when choosing your Wrangler, especially in power plants now. You have the four cylinder, you have a hybrid uh, coming, the V6, and then of course this uh, V6 diesel. So which one do you get? Well, it all depends on your needs and your budget. You see this Eco Diesel Sahara Unlimited does not come cheap. We mentioned it's over $9,000 for uh, that diesel option, plus, plus, plus. There are so many different options you can get for this, uh, like that roof, which it is amazing, but it is $4,000. So when you add it all together, it's not a cheap vehicle whatsoever. Uh, it's gonna run you almost $70,000 for something that you can have a lot of fun with though. But you know what they say, if you want to play, you have to pay. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed our review. We'll see you on the next review. Make sure you like and subscribe. Ciao. 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 Now. Now. <laughs>